Fun fact for you, every time the word fragrance is uttered, a skinfluencer loses their wings. Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole and welcome to a very different video today. We are talking about, as you may have guessed, two worlds that mm, barely cross over. I think we have to start this video with a little bit of why I'm sitting down today to make this video. Truth be told, I've been thinking a lot about essential oils lately, both because I did have a reaction not too long ago from a brand with essential oils in it, and also the beauty of Joseon drama, I'm sure you all have seen it, the brand that has become uh, beloved by many for being a fragrance-free brand, randomly decided to add essential oils into their newest sunscreen, and some people are big mad. So the topic was on my mind, as many of you probably know, I refuse to put myself into a box of just strictly an essential oil hater or a, 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 an enthusiast of essential oils. I don't believe that they cure all of the things that some MLMs claim, you all know. Instead, I think the topic of essential oils is a lot more nuanced. I think, frankly, it's pretty misunderstood by a lot of people. And while I was over here thinking about all of these things, I received a PR package from Henry Rose. This is to celebrate their uh, launch at Sephora, which was exciting for me because it reminded me that I have bought from this brand with my own money in the past, probably in, I think, around November of last year. And I bought from this brand then because I was interested in what they were doing. And that hasn't changed. I'm still interested in what they're doing. So I'll tell you what attracted me to the brand in the first place, and I'll even let them speak for themselves. This brand, out of nowhere, decided to release perfumes in which they gave the full list of ingredients in their perfumes. This is unheard of. We've talked about this in the past. Fragrances are a trade secret. They are legally not required to be on ingredients, labels, and obviously this applies with perfumes, but the problem is it applies with fragrance, and so this does transcend over into the realm of skincare. But more on that later. Now, get ready for it. This brand is actually another celebrity brand. I know, hot take for the skincare world. <laughs> But yes, the brand is actually founded by Michelle Pfeiffer. I'm going to link an article from Allure in the description box below. Uh, I think it's a really great article that explains how this brand got started and actually tells a little bit about who Michelle Pfeiffer is. This is very helpful for people like me who don't watch a lot of movies. Never seen Scarface, White Oleander. I've never seen Batman Returns. I, sh I should at least watch that one. Anyway. In this article, Michelle Pfeiffer talks about her inspiration for starting this fragrance brand. And, you know, this right here is exactly why I don't like to judge people who are looking into, you know, paraben-free and EWG. I don't want to judge that because I think that her reasoning makes sense. It's something I can't relate to as somebody who doesn't have kids. I'm, what, what do we call it? Dank? Dual income, no kids? So that whole line of reasoning, it's just something that I'm never going to personally experience, but I think it's important to still respect someone's position there. She talks about how she stopped wearing perfumes as a consequence, she missed it, and she did what celebrities seem to be in a very unique position to do. She started thinking about making her own brand. I think it's so funny that in this Allure article, apparently the people in her lives, people who were supportive of her, were telling her, no, don't do this, don't come out with this fragrance line, you should start up a skincare line. Michelle, thank you for not starting a skincare line. We are so tired. <laughs> but she was determined, she was very determined to make a safe fragrance line. And so her initial thought process was, Essential oils. Essential oils are safe, right? They're all natural. But what I love and respect so much in this story is that even though she had this idea that essential oils are safe, she didn't just go with her gut instinct. She started talking to professionals in the field, and this is how she ended up discovering, wait, essential oils? can be a problem for a lot of people. A lot of people can experience allergies from essential oils. And just take a look at this quote. It says it all. She not just heard this information, she really absorbed it. And she finally came out and said, 
So this word natural, this, this word that people think they want, is not always the safest option. And armed with this knowledge, Michelle Pfeiffer did something completely unexpected. She created a brand that uses synthetic fragrance ingredients with this end goal of making a safer brand. And not just that, this brand also lists every single ingredient in their perfumes, which again, she does not have to do, but she chose to do it. And I respect that so much. I think that's about all I'm going to really say about this brand in today's video because I want to have more conversation about how can essential oils not be safe. Um, but I do want to say one more thing, and that is, for as much as a lot of us are tired of celebrity brands, I was really thinking about how only a celebrity could pull this off. Only a celebrity could pull this off because you have to have enough money to start up a business, which I'm sure is a lot of money. And secondly, because she has her name, because even I have heard the name Michelle Pfeiffer, and that says a lot, she was able from the start to get, you know, featured in Allure magazine, to have this information about what she's doing with her brand really get out there. And again, it, it's such a great idea, especially for those of us with allergies. But yeah, the industry was absolutely going to buck this from day one. So this is the type of celebrity brand I really like to see. This is the kind that makes me feel like this is really a person who said, I'm in a unique position to make a brand that nobody else will. And I'm gonna do it. Anyway, as promised, I do want to talk more about what Michelle Pfeiffer ended up learning that I think a lot of people don't know. So how could essential oils not be safe? They're natural. How could they not be safe? I think that a lot of the problem that I see is that the concepts of natural and chemical are often perceived to be polar opposites. I suspect that most of my audience knows they are not opposites, but I think we have a bit of confusion around defining these terms. So let's define them. The Cambridge Dictionary says that a chemical is any basic substance that is used in or produced by a reaction involving changes in atoms or molecules. So kind of, you know, everything. So bear in mind that everything is comprised of chemicals in the traditional definition. It is very flustering when I hear people say things like, well, I want skincare that has no chemicals in it. It's confusing to me because I'm over here going, didn't you just say you want vitamin C in your skincare? What do you think vitamin C is? Vitamin C is a chemical, water is a chemical. We have to undo this idea that chemicals are dangerous. But can you have chemicals at dangerous levels? Yes, you absolutely can, and that is why safety testing is so important. It's so important to establish safe levels of everything. To get an essential oil, what you do is you take a, a lot of plant matter and you typically distill it, and in the end, you have a very, very concentrated amount of naturally occurring chemicals from within that plant. This right here is a bottle of 100% tea tree oil. Wow, does it ever have a very strong smell. And that's because of how condensed those chemicals are within that essential oil, which is exactly what makes essential oils so good for perfuming. To better illustrate this, let's go on over to PubMed together, where we can see some research that scientists have done on what are these chemicals within essential oils. I will link these studies in the description box below, but just know there are hundreds of studies if you are interested in finding out more about the chemicals within essential oils. Here's an example. They were looking at turmeric essential oil. Now you can see all the chemicals that are in this essential oil. You might even recognize one of them, camphor. A lot of people are familiar with camphor as an ingredient. Here's another study looking at the essential oils of geranium leaves as well as rose petals, and you can see the detection levels of all of these chemicals. Now, I want to point out something really interesting going on here. Linalool is a chemical that appears in quite a few essential oils, and on its own, it's not really a problem, but it does oxidize into a potential allergen. And remember that oxidation is something that is probably going to happen when someone buys a product. 
And I think this really illustrates the problem with using essential oils all willy-nilly. They're not necessarily bad on their own, the plants certainly aren't bad on their own, but you can end up with a product that does correlate with allergies for people. I hope that illustrates how if you have an essential oil in an ingredients list, you can have an ingredients list that is super simple. We'll say water, glycerin, and rose essential oil. Okay, but now you have a final product that is comprised of not three chemicals, but a lot more. And this is the problem for people who have established allergies. I'll go one step beyond and say this is where uh, the concern from, you know, Dr. Dre, other dermatologists comes from in terms of, but we don't really understand all of these chemicals and how they can interact with the skin, so could they be potential irritants? Absolutely. So I don't want to make this a long video, and frankly, I don't feel I need to. I think I've already kind of hit on all of my main points in today's video. But I do want to close out this video with a few final thoughts of where this conversation can go from here. First of all, I just want to say it is so exciting to see this brand that I haven't mentioned this yet, but they are EWG verified. That is not something that I typically care about. I think a lot of my subscribers don't typically care about that. It's kind of a different world. But Michelle, who I guess we are, we are now on a, a first name basis, Michelle has come out with a brand that is using synthetics and yet is EWG verified. This is that gray area that I've been living in for years. Michelle is making a brand out of it. And I love it because there is more nuance. I don't think essential oils are just bad. But I wholeheartedly don't think they are a good choice for people with allergies. And I think synthetics may be a good choice. That's it for today's video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I realize I'm not really talking about <laughs> the fragrances themselves, but I will go ahead and link them at Sephora. I am thinking about getting Queens and Monsters. I'll get another travel size. I don't usually buy full sizes because I don't have a signature scent, so I just like to buy the little travel sprays. But I am thinking about getting that before the uh, 4x multiplier ends over on the Sephora website. So let me know if any of you have tried this brand, if you have any favorites, your thoughts on the brand, your thoughts on this conversation. Thank you all so much for watching today's kind of divergence from what we usually talk about. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe. Have a wonderful rest of your week, and I will see you all next time.